Hi everyone, I'm Singai Shu, Steinway artist in New York City, and I am so excited to be talking with the dean of my school days at Yale, Dean Robert Blocker. It's great to see you, Singai. Looking forward to our conversation today. I want to say just one thing to our audiences who, who may not be familiar with the fact that um, not only are you such an amazing administrator and bringing people together, people with different points of views to be able to work together and go forth, but I also love the fact that we can talk about piano repertoire because you're an active performer, even despite your busy schedule and you're a Steinway artist. I am. I, I just think that that really informs how you go about transforming our industry because you are seeing it as someone who's really participating in it. That's the joy that I think we have. You know, that's one of the uh, added pleasures of knowing musicians and working together. But it's also actually, I'm going to throw the, the shout out right back to you. It's why what you're doing is so important because often and I try to make sure Yale is not this kind of place. Uh, in many, I'll say in many settings, the environment is so competitive that um, we fail to learn from each other. Mm. You know, I, I remember, and my favorite moments here are still kind of slinking into the back of, of Sprague Hall and trying to be unnoticed while uh, a student is rehearsing for a recital. <laughs> and uh, because I know I might not be able to go to the recital or what have you. And I'm thinking, how do they do that? How did they make that sound? You know, I want to run up on the stage and say, how did you do that? You know, <laughs> China holds a very, very dear place in my heart. This goes back to the time I was a child and the uh, church where my parents um, took me on every Sunday had a very special um, season that was around Christmas and it was to support Lottie Moon. And that was my first real live acquaintance with China. My grandfather became a Christian through missionaries. He was in Southern China. Uh -huh. And my father and my uncle, who was my piano teacher, they grew up singing hymns uh, because they had a little old upright. Uh, and this was all done in secret. Yes. Around church. But that's how they uh, learned enough to be able to get into the conservatories in Beijing and that's Shanghai. What from my you home. do as a musician and what I do is we try to express something that um, we take from a score and from the mind and heart of someone, and we synthesize it into our own experience and our being, and uh, then we express it through our playing. And it's about our spirit. And so in, in the spirituality, not the religiosity, but the, the spirituality of it becomes really quite interesting in how those things work together, I think. I was just reading this an interesting book by a New York um, visual artist, Mako Fujimara, and uh -huh. it's called Art and Faith. It just came out a month or two ago. Anyway, he, he talks about the work of the artist to bring the spirited life into our culture. And it, the, and the darker our spirits have been during the pandemic, the more I've been able to relate to that, that mission to to try to to bring the spirit back up again um, and not just to fix things, but to make things new and to imagine a new way forward. And I remember Dean Blocker, one of the lunches we had um, when we were visiting where you were talking about imagining a culture of the future and not thinking about the small things, but having the vision to really look long term. And that really stuck with me. Um, I think that if we had the ability to visualize how things could be, then we would have that hope and motivation. And that's what I get from playing the piano. That's why I'm so excited because when I'm working and I, I meet with the limits of, you know, what I can do or how much time I have to spend on this piece, then um, I am forced to find the vision of where do I want this piece to end up? What do I want it to actually sound yeah. like? 
And that's, that's what's been really exciting for me this year. Long ago when I was just starting out, I would, because I was, I was teaching piano students a lot more. I'm, you know, two thirds of my load was teaching. And um, I would start out early in the morning playing Bach. I kept the two WTC volumes on the key piano. You know, it would kind of open my mind to something because there was always something new there. And so I'm wondering if you have found what I did. It, and on some days, it was really uh, difficult for me to play at all. And I just didn't uh, during the pandemic. But one of the things that I've found, and I'm curious if you did too, is that you sense an evolution in what you're working on that's unusual from past evolutions because of the space that we're in right now. I mean, did, did you have any sense of that at all in working out some of your pieces? In the beginning, I just took time off. <laughs> I, I really I did too. I, I, you know, I think a lot of people did. I started out at the beginning of the pandemic trying to bring my listening group online and my teaching online. So I started doing um, a listening club every, every month. And I invited people who were strangers and I just, you know, put it out there. Anyone can come and I, I wanted it to be open. So I didn't want to use any technical words or, you know, textbook words. And every month I would learn something to be able to share, uh, music for this little listening club. And then a few months after that, I was doing a virtual concert and masterclass for Rocky Ridge, where I teach in the summer. And so I put together a program and I decided that it was going to be about transformation. And one of the variations I play for that transformation program, and it's really for me, like I, I needed to transform. <laughs> I chose the um, Rachmaninoff Variations Opus 22. Uh, and oh they're just gorgeous do you play them no i don't but they are beautiful it started to really motivate me to um feel like i can transform i can do it i can transform like the music and i started thinking about doing it as uh, an online recital project so two weeks ago i presented it in concert which is a, a very interesting project for me to learn how to create intimacy online <laughs> yeah. and we had a great time so it became more about what i was going through behind the scenes as much as it was the actual performance um, because i did a video essay in front of it to talk about some of the ideas that i was getting from the way he was composing it and in the way that, you know, as a performer, he composed it as a performer. And yeah. I think that affected what he was doing. But then also to try to get to um, connect with people in small groups and in large groups. It was a really interesting opening up of me, of, of my idea of what a concert would look like. I've been working on the Rachmaninoff for a while and, and on how, like how to present it, how to relate it to our lives. And now I am working on the Poulenc cello sonata because I want some happiness. <laughs> Good, I love that piece. I, I actually love a lot of the, mu the music of Poulenc. That's great. Yeah, his songs are so funny. Oh, the songs are wonderful. <laughs> uh, David Schifrin just did an album of Poulenc. We did the clarinet sonata, but we also did uh, his arrangement of uh, Mouvement Perpetuel. And, um, you know, the, the music is so joyful. And uh, like you said, it's, it's really happy music. But I, you know, it's, it's a really interesting time that we go through. And I think for me, when I've talked to other pianists and other musicians, they've had similar kinds of approaches in their own growth. It's an expression of our own inner emotions and, and feelings. I can remember my mother always knew I was angry, but and she would come in and she would say, what are you angry about? You're banging, you know, <laughs> happiness, anger, um, frustration, sadness. Sometimes I can remember being, uh, as an adult, 
so distraught. It might've been a personal loss. I would begin to practice or play and the, the, the overwhelming effect of hearing and feeling and thinking about all of this at the same time uh, was, was very, very sad. And then, you know, you seek some kind of solace in the music. I mean, do you have experiences like that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember like the, the first time I really felt depression, like I really understood depression was when I was playing the Chopin prelude and I realized that I would never see this person. I would never meet this person. He's dead. Uh -huh. He's gone. And I was so sad. I, I think I was like five years old. <laughs> yeah. But it taught me something about my humanness. Yeah. The music Our journey who I was. That opportunity to hear and to feel and to learn from each other is extraordinary when we allow ourselves to be open that way. Mm. And this is the opportunity you're giving us. So I know it's going to be really successful. What can the listener who's going to come in on this Yale China series for you, what can they expect? I just want to share some of the music that I really enjoyed playing in my head and see where it opens up places of feeling, um, of expression. I really do believe that music is the currency of hope. And I think that's what you're offering here. Well, thank you very much. It's great Thanks to so you. much, Singai. Good to see you. Bye.